All right, welcome to the video review for the first interim test, or the first quarter interim test, however you want to say it. Warning, this is going to go fast. There are 28 problems on the review. If I spend three minutes on each problem, this would be an hour and a half movie. And I do not have time for that, nor do you. So at any time, if you get a problem you don't understand, feel free to rewind. All right, so we'll do these first ones. Write an expression that correctly represents double p less than p to the second power. Um, and I'm going to skip that one into the second one and come back to it. The second one, by the way, the key word in all of these problems is expression. That means no equal sign. So 10 more than the cubed product of p and q. And the key thing is that you cube the product. So it's like this. Now, with, because we've learned our properties, we learned that addition is commutative, so order doesn't matter. So you could write this either way. Now, if we go back to the first one, p to the second power is going to be that. But we need double p less than that. So we need to take away 2p. The common mistake people make, that is incorrect, so I'll write it over here in red, is they write the problem like this. But this isn't 2p less than p squared. This is p squared less than 2p. Remember, so in subtraction, you're taking away. And what you're taking away, you write second in a subtraction problem. Um, write a problem, write an expression that correctly represents the quotient of the square root of y in 10. So we're going to need to be dividing. And on the top, we have the square root of y. And on the bottom, we have 10. I would also accept it if you just decided you wanted to do that, or heck, I'd even accept that. What I will not accept is that, because that's the square root of the quotient, not the quotient of the square root. All right, now, once again, changing key words, equation. Write an equation that correctly represents the absolute value of the difference of a number cubed and 5 is 10. So is is our keyword. Is 10. So there's our equal sign and our right side of the equation. The left side of the equation, absolute value of the difference between a number cubed and 5. And then we have the is 10. 45 children sign up to ride, a, ride the bus, and each bus carries X children. Write an expression that could be the could be used to determine the number of vehicles needed to, for the trip. So there's 45 kids. And we're going to divide that by the number of people that can fit on a bus. All right. So this is representing a technology enhanced question that you might see on the SOL. Um, circle the statements that collect correctly represent the algebraic expression x squared minus four. And this is the key, is on these type of problems, when you see them in this format, you must circle all the correct statements. So the difference of twice the number in 4, well, that's 2n minus 4. So that's not 1. Um, a number squared subtracted by 4, or x squared, I guess is what we should use, x. So that's 1 or less than a number squared. So we squared a number and we took away 4, so that's 1. This one is the square root of a number decreased by 4. So that's not 1 either. So our right answers is this one and this one. On the SOL, you would click on this, and it would be highlighted yellow around it, and you'd have to click both of them to get the problem right. All right, number 7. Which one of the following is an example of a symmetric property? And so the symmetric property is this one. Symmetric property is just if, if A equals B, then C equals A. Circle the equation that does not have the same properties as the other properties are below. Well, this is commutative. This is commutative. And this is commutative. Unitive. I'll spell it all the way out. 
Um, and what that says is that if, when we multiply the two numbers or we add two numbers, the order doesn't matter. In this one, the order didn't change, the parentheses did. So that's the associative property. And I just explained my answer, so we'll move forward. All right, match each statement with the corresponding property. If you've completely forgotten your properties, this is actually a nice way for you to learn them. And so I'm just going to write them all down. This is G, D, K, H, C, D, L, B, D, A, F, M, J. And what you'll notice is that D comes up twice. So match those and make flashcards or whatever you need to do to learn your property. All right, the real Slim Shady wrote these steps. What justifies step A? Well, he distributed the 12, so that's the dis distributive property. All right, what property justifies the statement below? If 510 equals 10. Well, the property he used was substitution. Because what he said is, okay, remember the equal sign flows both ways. If 5n equals 10, then anywhere I see 10 written, I can write 5n. Anywhere I see 5n written, I can write 10. Which is what he did here. He, he changed 5n to 10. What is all right? So now we're getting into the evaluation problems. What is the value of this? So we're going to substitute in. So this is going to be three times two minus two times negative seven over two times negative seven, which is six plus fourteen, because a negative times a negative is a positive over negative 14, which is 20, negative 20 over 14, which if we reduce the fraction is negative 10 over 7. Now, remember you will have your TI-84s when you do this. And so remember that one of the things that you can do on your TI is plug the original equation in and then reduce it. So I'm going to skip the second one. But if you haven't seen this trick, there's two different ways you can do this. But there's a fraction. And you can just go 6 plus 14 over negative 14. And hit enter. And you can see it'll reduce the fraction for us. If, on the other hand, you did it by hand and got to this decimal, and wanted to give your answers a fraction, you'd hit math, enter, enter. All right. What is the value of 2 times the cube root of p minus q? So this is 2 times the cube root of 27 minus 48. And this one you're going to have to evaluate on the calculator because, I'm sorry, the square root of 48 because the square root of 48 is not a perfect square. It's an irrational number. It's a decimal that goes on forever and doesn't repeat. So we will go to three decimal places. And we will get negative 0 0.928. And remember, in the absence of instructions, you round to the third decimal place. Do not round until you've completed the problem. Do all the problems and then round at the very end. What does cube root mean? Well, if a cubed equals b, then the cube root of b equals a. Or another way to put that, think of, let's try some numbers. If 2 cubed equals 8, then the cube root of 8 equals 2. If the area 
of a triangle is going to be determined by evaluating the expression 1 half base times height, where b is the base and h is the height of the triangle. What is the area of the triangle with a base of 6 inches and a height of 8 inches? All right, how did I get the answer? I sub substituted in, and I will get 24. Um, number 15. This is in these bars here are absolute value. An absolute value is the distance from zero for the origin. So now that's the official definition. The easy definition is if you take the absolute value of a negative number, you get a positive number. Take the absolute value of a positive number, the number doesn't change. So negative 2 times the absolute value of 7 minus 9 plus 5. Now, the common mistake people do is they try and apply the absolute value before they, re they simplify what's inside the absolute value. Treat the absolute value as a grouping symbol. And so before we do anything, we need to get it down to a single number. Then we apply the absolute value. And the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. This will give me negative 4 plus 5. So my final answer is 1. Number 16. So this will be 5 times 6 minus 2 times negative 5 over negative 5 times 6. Once again, we are just subbing in g and j into the equation. That will be 30 plus 10, because a negative times a negative is a positive, over negative 30, or negative 40 over 30, or negative 4 thirds. All right. For this one, 3 fourths squared plus 4 times 3 fourths minus 5. So this will be 9 over 16 plus 3 minus 5, um, which is 9 over 16 minus 2. Now, for people who want to do this as a fraction, this would be 9 over 16 minus 32 over 16. Which gives me negative 23 over 16. I'm guessing the majority of you, though, will use the calculator to do that fraction problem. Number 18 will be the square root of 144 plus negative 3 cubed. The square root of 144 is 12. Negative 3 cubed is negative 27. When I add those two numbers together, I will get negative 15. Once again, I know I'm going fast. Feel free to rewind. Just trying to get the video at a reasonable length. 3 times the cube root of 64, but we are squaring all of that. So the first thing we need to do is evaluate the cube root of 64, which is 4. So that'll be 12, because we multiply what's inside the parentheses first, squared, so that'll be 144. Right, now we get into the solving of the one and two step equations. So for here, I would add four to both sides and I get 17 equals negative x. Divide both sides by negative one and I get x equals 17. Excuse the announcement. Please come to the main office.
So for this one, I need to get x by itself. So I'll add a to both sides. I get x over 2 equals 23. Now, remember, this is x divided by 2. So I want to multiply both sides by 2, and I'll get x equals 46. Here, add 5 to both sides, and I'll get 1 third x equals 2. And then I divide both sides by 1 third, but remember, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And I'll get x equals 6. Here, there's two ways to attack this, these type of problems. Um, I'll do it the conventional way on the first two, and then I'll close, show you a slightly different way on the next one. So you distribute, and I'll get 2x minus 12 equals negative 12. I add 12 to both sides, and I'll get 2x equals 0. Then I will divide both sides by 2. Now I'll hear two people, two people yelling about two different things. They're like, you can't divide by 0. I did not divide by 0. I divided by 2. Okay. You have 0 cookies, and you split them evenly among each friend. Each friend gets 0 cookies. You can divide by 2. What you cannot do is have 2 cookies and split them evenly among 0 friends. And that's you, know, you can't do that, not to mention you don't have any friends. Um, so, also, this is not no solution. 0 is a very real answer. Zero could be the balance in your bank account. It doesn't mean your bank account doesn't exist. It just means there's no money in it. All right, so for this one, distribute the negative. And I'll get negative 5 minus x equals 1. So I need to get rid of the negative 5. So I add 5 to both sides, and I'll get negative x equals 6. And then I will divide both sides by negative 1 and I'll get x equals negative 6. Now, if you're a student in my class, you may have seen me do this, and if not, I think it's worth doing, is that remember that dividing by a negative 1 and multiplying by a negative 1 are the exact same thing. So, next up, I promised I'd show some of these to do it a little differently. So, remember that we undo things. Another announcement. Hold on. Apologize Thank for the break. Here. Come to the main office. Lionel, here. Come to the main office. Is that this is negative 3 times what's in the parentheses. So I can divide both sides of the equation by negative 3. And I can get x minus 3 equals negative 5. Now you could have distributed the negative 3. You'll get the same answer either way. I just wanted to show those kids who had stuck with it long enough that there's more than one way to do these kind of problems. All right, so here, all of this is being divided by 3. So we got to get rid of the 3 first. I'll have 5 minus x equals 9. Subtract 5 from both sides. I'll have negative x equals 4. Multiply both sides by negative 1. And I'll get x equals negative 4x. Once again, I know I'm going fast, but you have rewind button on YouTube. So I'm going to distribute the 1 half, and that'll give me 2x minus 5 halves equals 8. I can go that way, but instead, and this is where it becomes useful to remember that other trick I had, is I can also multiply both sides by 2. That cancels, and I'll get 4x minus 5 equals 16. Add 5 to both sides, and I'll get 4x equals 21. Divide both sides by 4, and I'll get x equals 21 over 4. And the last problem. Once again, if I got the traction up front, I multiply both sides by 3. That cancels. Multiplicative inverse. And I'll get 7 minus 5x equals 27. Subtract 7 from both sides, I'll get negative 5x equals 20. Divide both sides by negative 5. 
and I'll get x equals negative 4. So if you had a question on any of these and you don't, didn't feel it was explained well enough in the video, please bring in a question to class. Uh, watch the video as many times as you feel is necessary, and good luck on the test.